Hey, beautiful. <laughs> What's up, bangs? Also known as fringe, which is a way more pleasant word to say. I might intermix the two, intertwine the two. I might go between bangs and fringe just because like, I know everybody calls them bangs in America, but elsewhere in Europe, they call them fringe and it's way cuter. But just know, I'm talking about bangs. Fringe equals bangs, bangs equals fringe. Here's the mathematical equation for it, in case you're still Confused? Bangs are dope, all right? They can enhance your overall vibe or your image. They can also correct unwanted features of your face. So if your face is too damn long, you can correct that. If your face is too damn wide, you can correct that with bangs. If your face is too angular and you don't like that, you can correct with bangs. If you got bad filler in your cheekbones and you got bad Botox in your forehead, you can fix that with bangs. The possibilities with bangs are endless. Just to preface this video though, we are gonna talk a lot about face shape. And so if you do not know what your face shape is, this may not be that helpful. But lucky for you, I have made a video about face shapes in the past. So it'll be linked below. The video is called how to pick the correct haircut for your face shape. And the first thing I do in that video is go over all the different face shapes you could possibly have and thoroughly explain how you know if you have that face shape. It's pretty simple though. So I think you might be able to follow along even if you don't watch that video. But if you want to learn more about your face shape, I keep saying face shape, watch the video, it's linked below. And then come back here or don't come back here <laughs> just leave me alone I guess you know <laughs> So today we're gonna go over the three different factors I laid out for you to figure out which bangs will suit your face and what bangs will suit your lifestyle, your attitude, and so on. We'll go over all of those details. And then after you obtain all that beautiful information about bangs, we're gonna move on to a little demonstration and you'll see what that is later. That was a long enough intro, I think. Why don't we just do it? Let's get started. Like I said in the beginning, bangs really depend on your face shape. Which ones will suit you best depend a lot on your individual face shape. Now this, take it with a grain of salt. The ideal face shape for a woman, according to research, I don't know how much research was done on this, but the most feminine face shape is an oval. As a hairstylist, typically, not all the time for everybody, but our goal is to make your face appear more oval. So based on that, I'm gonna be going over all all the different ways you can make your face look more oval with bangs. First, let's go over round faces. Round faces tend to be wider around the cheeks and you know, just round. They tend to be a lot more full around this area. So with a rounded face, we're trying to add more angles. We're trying to get a more angular dimensional face, but not too angular because we still want to keep it sort of rounded, but just like a skinnier rounded. I definitely like a side swept bang here. Anything going, you know, across the eye, a little bit across this side, just really adding a nice angle on your hair. Something that just chops up your face a little bit figuratively. <laughs> not really. I don't need you to chop your face off. Keep your face on, but chop into it with your hair. It'll add nice bone structure. You can carve out those cheekbones, make you look really sucked in with some angular kind of fringe moment going on the side. I would just keep it a little bit above the eyebrow because we don't want to get rid of your length. We want to keep your length there. We want to get rid of some width. We're just trying to keep those angular pieces on the side, really sucking in those cheekbones to make you look more angular and more like an oval. And then, you know, you can do a shorter bang. You can do a baby bang. You can do a medium bang. Just keep Keep it above the eyebrows. I wouldn't recommend doing it below the eyebrows or else you're gonna really get a short, short face because you do have a round face. It already is pretty short generally. So just don't cut the length too short and add some nice edgy layering on the side. Round girls, that's for you. Square faces is pretty much the same thing, right? If you get a really strong jaw, this is gonna be a more of a situation you're gonna work on with the length of your hair. So cutting into the layers on the side is definitely gonna help soften up that jaw. Also with a square face, you do have a lot of width to it. So adding a bang that's not too long, not too short is gonna be great. It's perfect. And then again, get rid of a little bit of the width on the side with some layering. And that's also square. So square and round are quite similar, so I wanted to go over those first. So oblong, clearly you got a long face, <laughs> which is fine. You want longer bangs because it'll trick the eye to thinking that your face isn't as long as before. So anything kind of below the eyebrow, like right below the eyebrow, kind of in your eyelashes would be great. You're getting rid of a lot of your forehead length. That is probably at this point right now, a lot of forehead space. So you have a lot of land to cover and please take it up because it'll flatter your face a lot more 
more in that way if you do have a longer bang. And now the side, the kind of angles you do on the side are up to you because you're not trying to get rid of any width on the side. You're just trying to keep your width the same, but get rid of length. So definitely a longer fringe is highly recommended for people with oblong faces. Now we're on to heart shape. Heart shape faces, literally it's a heart. So it's wider up here and skinnier down here. It comes to a point, it's a very pointy chin. I definitely have a heart shaped face. If you can see right here, it's kind of like, Take it or leave it. It's a uh, very abstract heart. All these ideas are pretty abstract, but you know, you can figure it out the more you work with it. Here, we're trying to decrease the width of the forehead. Instead of before where we're trying to decrease the width of the cheekbones and the width of just the face in general with our square and our round faces, here we're trying to decrease here instead of here. So can you guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna take the hair, and we are not going to cut the bangs too far to the side because we wanna decrease that forehead length, right? So we're gonna take the bang section from probably here to here, like just above the eyebrows, so you can kind of push it out of the way and you still get a nice face, but you wanna decrease the length up here, and the way you're gonna do that is by taking in the bangs and making them way less wide than you normally would. You're not going from side to side of your face. When people have very narrow faces, they're gonna bring the bangs all the way out to the edge of the the corner of their hair. And when you have a wide forehead with a heart-shaped face, bring it closer. Bring it in, girl. We don't need to go all the way out here. We can bring it in. And that'll give you a great, beautiful, more rounded oval face. And if you want to make it even more ovalish, definitely add some layering. And that's going to give you the most feminine look, the most appealing to the masses kind of look. And with length, it's not really that important here because we're not talking about having a longer face or a shorter face. We're just talking about the width of it at the forehead. So you can play around with length here. Do whatever you please. You know, do a soft fringe, a heavy fringe, anything like that. It's going to work perfect for you. You can also do a sort of bang that starts off in the middle and is short and goes rounded because you're gonna really round out your face instead of having that wider forehead. It's gonna go like this instead of this. Anything with kind of a rounded beveled edge, like a little crescent moon type of bang. That's what we're gonna call them from now on. Crescent moon fringe, actually. I haven't been saying fringe a lot. That's my bad. Ew, bangs is such a weird word. Um, I have problems, so. The diamond face shape. The diamond actually is becoming increasingly popular within female male culture that want a diamond face. A lot of people are getting filler to, you know, accentuate more of the curvature of their faces and accentuate the jaw and the cheekbones. And people are getting really intense cheekbones and they're looking very crazy, in my opinion. If you wanna go there, just go and do it, girl. Do it. It's your face, do whatever you want. The length of your bangs don't matter much here. You can really do, you can really get away with a lot of things. Cause again, you're not dealing with a proportion problem this way. You're dealing with kind of a curvature problem this way and this way and this way and it's really gonna count on you know the softness of your haircut around here not really the sharpness of your bangs up here you can really play around with the heights and weights of your bangs and by weight I mean do you want to have a really thick bang or thin bang whatever you want to do with a diamond face it's pretty much fine if you want to feminize your face a little bit more I would definitely recommend having a lot of that nice feathering going on not too much so you look like really shaggy and very dated but just enough to kind of add just that little bit of, you know, face hugging hair moment. <laughs> Whatever that means. Uh, you can also do that with, you know, styling your hair. So if you curl your hair, you can do some curls going forward around your face. That'll decrease and give you a little less of a sharp jawbone and cheekbone. What I would choose personally for a diamond face for me, for my clients, I like to do a nice point cut fringe moment where it's not too blunt, but just blunt enough with a little bit of a frazzled edge on it to make it look a little bit more of a 2019, 2020 type of haircut. Oh, it's gonna be 2020 soon, that's kind of weird. Very current kind of bangs, and I like to keep it right above the eyebrow. I feel like it's much more modern that way. Anything below the eyebrow is a tiny bit dated if it isn't done right. And I like to just keep it right above because it's just less annoying for people, and it's all about the eyebrows these days. I mean, come on, like. Hello? So <laughs> keep your eyebrows showing just a tad, you know? So that's what I would like is just a point cut bang right above the eyebrow for anybody with a diamond face shape. And our oval girls out there, you, you, you're always the queens of this, these videos. It's an ideal face shape for to look the most feminine and that's just how it is. I didn't create mankind, like that's just what we visually see on women. It, it's an oval and it just happens to be one of the most flattering things to see on a woman is an oval. So. 
You can have a lot of fun with your bangs. You can do a micro bang, which is so cute. I love a good micro bang. Uh, you can do a really blunt bang, which isn't like my favorite thing ever. But blunt micro bangs, cute. Blunt long bangs, not so much for me. You can do a thin bang, you can do a medium thickness bang, you can do long bangs, you can do short bangs, you can do middle bangs, you can do side bangs, anything really, because you're not trying to correct anything. But for an oval, any bang is really gonna bring attention to your eyeballs, because everything is pointing right to here, and you're kind of getting a lot more darkness over here, but in like a sexy way. So if you bring them down, it's gonna be like, oh, look at my eyes, look at my mascara, look at my eyeliner, look at my eyelashes. They're new. It'll be that kind of moment. So if you're into that, then I mean, if you have an oval face, just cut them at above brow level. Like I said before, for the last face shape, cut them at eyebrow level and you'll get that amazing, you know, look in my eyes kind of moment. And you'll keep that gorgeous, beautiful oval face. Next thing, like I just touched on really quick, I wanna go over attitude. That is my second main factor when choosing which fringe shape is perfect for you. If you have a cool attitude, you can usually go with a lot more different looks than somebody who doesn't have a very cool attitude. <laughs> Everybody has a cool attitude in one way or another, but I really mean, you know, if you're in a band, right? You might wanna go and do something really architectural, really edgy, really blunt, really like, like, you can do weird stuff and really cool stuff. You guys know I, I I love the weird stuff. I like the kind of the out of the norm stuff. I mean, if you can pull it off, please go ahead and do it. You can listen to what I just said previously according to your face shape and then kind of work off that and add kind of more architectural, funky, fun stuff into it if you are more like that. Or say you work at a library, okay? Or you're a teacher or you're anywhere that, you know, might get a lot of stares and you don't want a lot of attention, but you want some bangs. Maybe don't go with something like that. Maybe go with something that is less in your face. Maybe don't do such a heavy bang. Maybe do something that's a little lighter and feathery and non-committal and isn't so in your face. You know, we can do something that's a little bit finer of a bang. All about attitude. Just go with how you feel. Who are you? What do you represent? What do you want to represent in your haircut, in your fringe? How do you want people to view you? Go based off that. I love that. Um, and hopefully if you go to a hairdresser to do this, they will also base your fringe cut off of who you are. And they'll say, I don't think you can pull it off, man. <laughs> Sometimes you just can't. Listen, okay, you might want something, but you can't pull it off always. So unless you're just like the coolest person ever, which you might be. I don't know you. Make sure you're, you know, your hairdresser takes into account who you are as a person when they're cutting your fringe. Now, my third thing to take into consideration when getting a fringe cut is your lifestyle, okay? Right now, where I live, I live in New York, and it is damn cold, okay? If you guys are around here on the East Coast, you know, it's... I don't really mind it that much, but it's it's a little bit, uh, it's a lot for me. Um, <laughs> I'm cold. Right now is the best time to cut a damn fringe. And you know why? You don't have to worry about the heat making your forehead drip and sweat, your bangs sticking to it, the humidity hitting, and your bangs going crazy. Um, you style them in the morning and the humidity hits, they go crazy. All these things could happen in the summer that don't generally happen in the winter. So they're gonna sit nice in the winter. They're not gonna frizz up on you in the middle of the day. It's all gonna be great. So I would recommend, you know, if you're gonna try out a fringe for the first time, do it during the winter. It'll be the best time of year to do it and also, by the time summer comes around and it gets warm again, you can totally grow them back out by then and you can pin them back out of your face or put them behind your ear by then. It'll just make your life a lot easier if you cut your hair during the winter while the weather doesn't kind of, you know, ruin your lifestyle of bangage. And of course, if you live in a warmer climate all year round, just take that into consideration if you have naturally frizzy hair and you're like, dude, this is just gonna frizz up all the time. Maybe don't get fringe. <laughs> There's nothing worse than a girl walking around with a really bad blunt cut fringe and it's just like, Boop, 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 like everywhere and you can tell she woke up and just left her house like that and like did not put any time or work or effort into it. It's like, girl, you're committing to these things. Please show the world how it's done, okay? Let the bang society know you do not come here to play. You are here to stay. Also use the proper humidity defense products. If you are in the humid weather, you do want to get bangs and you blow them out or you straighten them every day, please use Glitterati. I'm serious, you guys. It has been tested by a lot of people who live in warm climates. They have told me all about how their hair stays so well and that is how it's formulated. Glitterati is formulated with a lot of anti-humidity properties and it smooths your hair out and adds a lot of hold. That is really gonna help your bangs stay. I love putting 
glitterati in bangs when I style them because I know they're gonna last. They're gonna last in that same position. I initially blow dry them and style them in and it's gonna last through any kind of weather except for rain. Your hair will still get wet. We haven't figured out a product that will not make your hair get wet yet. We will work on it, I swear. An umbrella for your hair, spray on umbrellas. We will work on that over here. I don't know how long it's gonna take to work on, okay? I don't think that's gonna come out for a while, so. Don't count on me for that. How much time do you really wanna spend doing your hair in the morning? Some people, they like to get beautified. They love it. They love to do their makeup. They love to get cute. I happen to be kind of one of those people, but like kind of in between. I don't always like to do it, but I do it. I like to really do it. I mean, it's gonna take a lot more time to do your hair because you have now these bangs there. You're gonna take a lot more time to style them. You have to blow dry them or straighten them. Or if you're lucky enough to already have straight, perfect hair, maybe you just air dry them. Maybe it doesn't take you more time. These are all factors to take into consideration. If you work out a lot and you wanna get fringe, another thing to think about. Yeah, of course, you can wear a headband, put them back, you know? Keep them out of your face while you sweat, let them back down, brush them back down. You can find different ways to clip them back if you still want them and you do work out a lot, just saying, Maybe another thing to think about. Do you have an active lifestyle? Are you sweating a lot? Think about it. Don't make a rash decision. Those are the people who have bang regret. Nope, I don't want you to have bang regret. That's not what I want for you. I want you to be fully into those things, okay? I want you to look in the mirror and be like, yes, I got banged. So now that we went over all that information, you kind of figured out what you want to do by now. And if you lasted this long, you're probably like, all right, now what do I do? Do I go to a salon? Yes, please go to a salon and get a bang trim or get your bangs done. It's not very costly. You can do it. I believe in you. Save up, do it. If you're a hairstylist though, watching, this might help you. Or if you're that person who's definitely gonna do it yourself, 100%, I cannot stop you, keep watching. I'm gonna show you just a little demonstration on how you can easily cut bangs at home. Just please be careful. Or if you're a hairstylist out there, maybe you'll learn a thing or two about, you know, how I like to do it. And we're all different. So this is just how I like to cut bangs. Other people do it differently. Let me get Miss Manny Quinn out. She's over here and she's like, please put me on camera. I'm like, oh my God, girl, chill. Like, oh my God, this is totally my show, not yours. Boom, we have our head. Look how cute she is. I talk about her hair color every day in my house, how obsessed I am with it. Like, look how sickening this hair color looks. Oh, I actually did a video about this hair color. Um, If you wanna see that video, it'll be linked below. And you can see what color I used and how I got this color. Okay, so we're just gonna do a basic bang, all right? We're not gonna do anything crazy. I'm gonna do a little, little above the eyebrow, maybe a little bit below. I mean, she's the tiniest forehead. It's like two fingers. We can't cut it that short here or else we're gonna cut off half of her face. Basically, what I like to do is put the head forward, right? Do you have a hair naturally falls forward, um, you're gonna want to cut sort of that shape out. When you put your head down, when you have a fringe and the hairstylist doesn't cut enough back or enough back here, you end up with a bunch of longer hairs going over your short fringe. So that's always really annoying when I see that, when people put their heads forward and it all just falls forward and the fringe gets all messed up and they have to go like this and take the pieces back. Like, yeah, you're always gonna have to do that probably, but not as much if you do this technique where, I mean, it's very simple. Just put the head forward um, and then kind of work from there. We're gonna kind of do a triangular shape on both sides. So I'm gonna do two. Listen, you can always do a little at a time. That's a huge recommendation of mine. You don't need to go and do a full freaking fringe all at once. Work your way up. Say you cut this layer and it's just not enough. You're like, I want more full bangs. Okay, take another layer down, cut a little bit more, but just work your way there. You don't need to do it all at once and just go crazy with it. So let me carve out this other side and just make it nice and symmetrical. We love symmetry, all right? Boom. So her hair is nice. I do like to cut fringe dry because, you know, they tend to pop up a lot, all right, when you're done with them. And it's kind of annoying when you're like cutting wet hair and all of a sudden you're like, I don't think it's gonna pop up that much. I think this is a good length. And then you dry it and they just go up to like here and you're like, <laughs> I look stupid. So cutting it dry and nice and straight is going to be best for me. You know, everybody's different, but that is how I like to do it. Now these are gonna be a little bit on the thicker side, but not too thick. It's just about enough hair to start with, in my opinion. We're getting a nice multicolor bang here. I love that. I'd probably also, you know, try and just get this middle section away real quick. We are gonna take our shears and I'm gonna point cut. I'm gonna try and do this from the side of our head so I can show you. So make sure they're nice and combed straight and we're gonna kind of lift this up a bit. Okay, so our eyebrows kind of right there. We're gonna go a little bit below to start. Always start long and go shorter. You can always get rid of more length. You can't 
Just grow your hair back though. And it's really hard to cover up with extensions when you get bangs that are bad. And this is gonna look weird for a second until I blow dry it. Just be careful. You can always lift up the hair and cut like this. Okay, so you don't, you know, cut your nose off. It doesn't need to be that perfect right now. I mean, I'm just doing the preliminary steps. Okay, so that's cut one, right? Looks crazy. <laughs> I would go ahead and style it how they're gonna lay when they are nicely styled, and then we'll go in and really finish this off and really get it cut up here and really kind of thin it out a little bit and get it going with her particular face shape and get it looking nice. Cause it's like right now it looks a little crazy, huh? All right, so I have my water here. We're just gonna wet this down, get rid of that part. We're gonna take electric rain, uh, my moisture cream, and we're just gonna add a little dot of it. That's not maybe a little bit too much. Nice moisturized bangs, never hurt anybody. This will really add a lot of moisture to her hair. Her hair is t a tad bit dry, but nothing bad, but it'll also add a lot of shine um, and just make it a lot easier for me to blow dry her hair. You'll see her bangs will be like whew, so shiny from this product. And we'll just comb that through. We'll turn this blow dryer on and we'll go side to side to get rid of that part first and then we'll round brush it and then we'll be back to cut more. Now we have a little bit of a bevel and it's not too like mommy-ish. Like if you put a more of a bevel than this, it's gonna be very like, girl, where'd you come from? 80s or something. So we're gonna take it up very high here. I'm laying it on my comb again. You can also just cut directly on the face, but with a client, I wouldn't recommend it. So let me try and show you here. Bounce it down. And we're just gonna start right at the end. We're gonna bring it up and we're gonna check that length. That looks cute. We're starting to get there. Okay, okay, maybe a little bit shorter. And I'm point cutting here. Okay, that is probably a good length for her. I'm happy with that length. Like it's right on her eyelashes. She just has a very short forehead. I don't know, I just feel like it's gonna look Look a little weird on her if we bring it up too high. All right, let me cut the other side. So I'm dropping the hair down to see how this kind of reacts. It looks kind of like a Barbie bang right now. <laughs> I'll fix it. Okay, this is not the end result. Don't worry. Ooh, it's kind of like cool though. We're just gonna go in and thin out the fringe. So if you're gonna do this to yourself, please be careful. You can do a lot of damage. Um, I'm just going in and I'm just making slices because I think her hair is way too thick up here. It is sitting very weird and she needs some of that weight taken out. So we're going in and just slicing it up. Now we're not slicing too close to the root or else she's gonna get a lot of little hair sticking up. I mean, she's gonna get it anyways just because her hair does just stick up naturally like that. Um, she's a mannequin. She's not a human being, if you didn't notice already. <laughs> so she's gonna get a little bit of weirdness going on up there. This is looking already a lot better. I think she needs more of her face showing too. Ugh. You know, I like to just sit here and I like to just work on the bangs. Just go for it. Just, you know, don't cut too much off, but just keep going until it looks right to you. But don't overdo it. My dad always said, hairdressers always overdo everything, <laughs> but I try not to. And so I'm just showing you guys right now, you know, all the things you can do with scissors. You can also use, for sure, razor. A razor is awesome for bangs because you're not gonna get a super blunt edge. Also, you can use thinning shears. You can definitely use clippers. It's pretty easy to do. I mean, if you don't slip up at all, be careful. Have a professional do it. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool to cut hair with clippers because it's very fast and efficient. Now, I keep working on this literally all day, but you guys get the gist here. Um, you just gotta keep working until it's perfect for her. Just gonna work a little bit more. I need to open her face up. It's a little too dark in here. Where are you? And boom, she's not a human being, but she looks cute. She's got a cute little fringe with her cute little blowout. This is really just more to show technique uh, and how you can cut. Take with a grain of salt. Her bangs don't lay very flat, but she is still quite adorable. I like the pieciness I added in there at the end too. You can really exaggerate the hair when you cut out a lot of pieces. So she's adorable. Let me just, ooh, sex her up a little bit. Ooh, kind of serious bang. Also, I like the hair color with it. It's very like, oh, who am I? Dark or light? Take your choice. Cute, thank you for that. Um, I hope you like your bangs. I think you are living your best life. Okay, see you later. Get out of my set.
And lastly, if you are not trying to commit to fringe, but you want it anyways, lucky for you, they make clip, <laughs> this looks so weird. They make clip on fringe. I don't really have like a total recommendation on where to get it. I got this one on Amazon. I'll link it below. It's actually a hair piece. So kind of gives you the fake scalp also, but I think it looks really realistic. This is actually human hair. So you can color it any type of color you want. You can get the pre-colored, um, just do your research, find out which one is best for you. And I like to cut mine and color mine myself. So I just get a regular old virgin hair front hairline weft and I cut it myself. So you just clip it on and you can kind of like do a side bang. You can do whatever. You can do anything you want. Oh no, my hair. And yeah, cut it to your liking or get a professional to do it, please. That is a clip on bang and that is always an option. If you're too much of a baby to actually do it yourself, to actually do it on your real hair. Or you're like a celebrity or something and you need to go out and you just want to bang for that night or like an event, you just want to bang for a night. <laughs> <gasps> I am all banged out for today. Again, it's been a lot of fringe talk in the past week, the past two weeks. And good luck if you're gonna do it. Tweet me a picture of your before and after. I would love to see it. You can tweet me and follow me on Instagram at BradMondoNYC. You can check out my hair care brand on Instagram at XMondoHair. And you can head to XMondoHair.com to purchase the product you saw in today's video or just check out the other products we offer. And that is all for today. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to live your extra life and I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>